Thanks for swinging by the Solo YouTube channel and for your interest in Service Mesh. This is Christian Posta, and I'm the field CTO here at, at Solo. And uh, in this video, we're going to take a, a look at the evolving capabilities in, in Istio with respect to VM support. Now, just a few months ago, I did do a set of videos on the support in Istio 1.7. If you come to the Istio IO YouTube channel you and click on videos, you can see not only a, quite a bit of very interesting videos and content around Service Mesh and Envoy, uh, including a What's New in Istio 1.8 video that I did with John Howard from Google. But if you scroll down far enough, you see some stuff, really good stuff, really good content from you all about Envoy, but then somewhere here, and here you see the Istio 1.7 videos that I did for, for VM support. Now in this video, we're going to take a look at, if we click on some of the setup docs, install on virtual machines, we're going to be loosely going through this doc, but we're going to point out some of the new capabilities that have been introduced that I covered in one of the blog posts on the solo blog. Specifically, auto-registration of your VMs and the DNS proxying capabilities of the sidecar now. So let's get right to it. We're going to use one of my favorite tools, Canines. We're going to look at this cluster where we see we have Istio 1.8 installed. And we have uh, otherwise fairly clean cluster. We don't have much running in it. We have the HTTP bin service and the sleep service running from the Istio samples. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new namespace, the VM services namespace, and create a new service account that we'll use to identify VM instances when they connect to the mesh. So if I go back here, come back to our namespaces, we see now we have our VM services namespace, but nothing is running in there. So what we want to do is we want to create a new workload group resource, which is sort of the template for any of these VM instances that will connect. That will, and the auto registration capabilities, create new workload entry resources, which we'll see. Uh, but before we do that, let's, uh, let's take a look at our workload group. And we're going to we're going to call it uh, Python HTTP. This this will be the service that's running in the VMs, and we'll attach it to that service account that we created a second ago. And let's create that in our cluster, and then let's create based on that template the rest of the files necessary to get our VM sidecar bootstrapped. So. Specifically, if we look here, if we look in our files folder, we see we have our short-lived identity token, which we'll use to bootstrap the identity. We see the root CA and, and some other files here. So if we go to our VM real quick, come over here, take a look. We have a clean VM, not much running there. And uh, what we want to do is copy those files over to the VM so that we can get started. On, on the VM and connect that to the mesh. So now if I do ls here, we're going to un unpack this, go here. And now what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to, if you look in the doc, um, we're going to, so we, we, we copy the files over. We're just going to do some of these steps, configuring the VM, just copying files in the right location on the VM. So. To do that, I we'll just have a little script here to prepare the VM. And this will also install the sidecar proxy onto the VM. So if we do that, now we should have our sidecar proxy installed. It's not running yet. Um, and if we come back to our service mesh here, if we do kubectl get workload entries, we should see we don't have any because no VM instances have connected up yet. So now if we do a start, the Istio, and tail, the logs, we see things look pretty good here. 
and it should be connected to the Istio control plane. So now if I come back here and check what workload entries were created, we should see our new VM has attached and the auto registration has kicked in. If we take a look at this a little closer, we can see it, uh, it created this workload entry automatically based on the IP address of the VM that connected to it. And uh, we've also given it uh, some other, other metadata. So since this VM is now connected to the service mesh, we should theoretically be able to uh, call one of our services. So default cluster.local, I think it's here, headers. And we cannot, that's because this Mac keyboard is not working very well. So, okay, now we can, we, we can connect in, but notice we called this fully qualified domain name. Now this is not a, a name that the VM automatically knows. All right, so what we've done is we're we have a little sidecar DNS proxy that if we look at the IP tables, when we installed the sidecar proxy, what we'll see is DNS traffic is being automatically forwarded to our little sidecar proxy. Now the Istio sidecar proxy does know about HTTP bin uh, and some of the other services in the mesh and any of the, mesh, any of the services that are created by service entries. So any of the traffic, any of the DNS traffic is going first to our caching proxy on the sidecar. And if it can be resolved there, it will be, and the services in the mesh will be resolved there. For anything else, it'll be forwarded onto the system DNS. So that's all good. That's, that's, that's really, really cool. Makes it very easy to, oh, let's call the right one. Very easy to call our services in the mesh now. Now going the other way, so being able to call from the mesh to the VM, let's, let's, let's give that a try. So if I do run our HTTP server here, and I think that's running, and then let's go ahead and take a look at the IP address of this VM. So if I do curl this VM IP, we should, oop, no, it's on port 9090, I think. Okay, so that does work. Now, this just means the service is exposed on the VM and, and, and anybody can call it. But since it's also the VM's part of the mesh now, we can, we can, let's see, apply strict mutual TLS to the mesh. So now, not just anybody can call the VM. Let's try to call it again, it doesn't work because it's expecting mutual TLS, it's part of the service mesh but we can call it from within the service mesh. Now we have our workload created. The last bit of the puzzle is to create the service entry. Let me see if I remember exactly what this part of the demo does. Yeah, all right, let's do that. So we're gonna create the service entry so that services within the mesh can use a particular host to talk to the services running on the VM. So we'll copy that and then let's apply it. Now, if I go to one of my services running here, oh, gosh, I need a new machine. Uh, go here, shell into it. Now, if I try call from within the mesh, this host name that I define in the service entry, it should go to the service running in the VM. And this, now this service, this host name, I mean, is resolved by the local DNS proxy. So this, this little DNS caching proxy is on all of the sidecars. So even though this is not a real host name, it is inside the mesh because we created that service entry. And now the DNS proxy uh, will also serve up these service entry names. So in this demo, we saw 
how to use auto registration and how how powerful this new DNS proxy is in Istio 1.8. Now the auto registration capabilities are experimental. The DNS capabilities are also experimental, but they're, they're enabled in uh, the preview profile. Uh, but these are, these are coming along quick and very, very powerful. So thanks for stopping by and uh, look forward to the, the next set of videos on, on Istio and Service Mesh.